You're, you're, you're a, a, a vegetarian. Yes, I have been for quite some time. A vegetarian! Hello and welcome to Food to Watch Films by Tromo Special Part 2 Partner <laughs> And um, yeah, uh, uh, thanks for joining us once again on our journey into the world of Troma Entertainment Yeah, the uh, yeah. If you're freaky, freaky world of trauma. Yeah. If you joined us in part one, obviously we did a review of Class of Newcomb High, yeah. and we started our countdown of our top ten trauma films. Yeah. Which, uh, yeah. And, uh, we, we will continue in this one, and uh, yeah, we, we'll see. And this one's got a, a a slight Shakespearean vibe about it. It has indeed. Um, you, you can uh, probably guess which film it is if you are a fan of the, the trauma catalogue. Yes. Um, we're going for uh, Tromeo and Juliet. Indeed, a, uh, a classic, classic love down. story. Yeah. Are you a, are you a fan of Shakespeare, Adam? Or? Um, I uh, I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> take, take, take a bit of old Bill's work, a old Willie, old, w- Willy, old Willy Willy style. Willy yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah, Merchant yeah. of Venice. Dig that. Caesar, a fan of Caesar. Yeah. I was. Um, I, I can't remember, I can't remember yeah. which one it is. There's, there's someone insult someone by calling them an egg, which I always thought was quite. <laughs> which was that? I, I can't remember. That was, I just remember at school there was a line where it's like, "Watch you egg," and it was hilarious. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I've, ne- I've never used that. Never called anyone an egg. No, no. no. Do you think they'd find it offensive? Um, as as a bold gentleman, um, potentially. It, it depends who it's directed at and. And if an, an egg is actually involved as well. Yeah, exactly. God, can you imagine being eggs and being called an egg? And you were bald. I'd just be, I'd just be confused by it. I think mm. more than anything else. Mm. Well. But uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm sure that's not what Bill intended. In no, his, in and, I, and I'm sure had I been writings. paying more attention, I would have got a lot more out of that rather than just that one tiny element. But anyway, but yeah, I do like a bit of Shakespeare. It is. But, you know, and, and Shakespeare, uh, I feel that I should... Maybe go see a, a play into adulthood, but it's something that we associate with being at school and uh, and being compulsory within English class mm-hmm. uh, to learn about. Uh, but this is a, a nice contemporary spin yeah, um, on a, on a on a classic piece of literature, yeah. which we'll go about. In, it, we'll go into in yeah. further detail. Um, hot, hot, hang fire on that. Hold one. hold the As, phone. Uh, we've got hold the, that phone. We've got the next installment in your top ten. Haven't we, we do. Don't, let's not be jumping the and, gun. Um, d- just just to, to reintroduce, obviously, um, uh, as part of this trauma special, we uh, put some polls out there. We communicate with people in, the, in forums, uh, community groups, to get people's recommendations, people's you know top um, trauma films, and we're doing a bit of a countdown. Um, so last episode we introduced our ten, nine, eight. Now we're going to do seven, four, and five. So, uh, do you want to do you want to hit us with it, Adam? Seven, four, and five. You know what I mean. Cause this is Adam's. Adam's top ten. <laughs> That's right, folks. Ten. So, number seven in our countdown of the top ten drama films, as voted by you, the listener. Oh. Okay. So number, uh, s- num- <laughs> sorry, <laughs> get more French there. <laughs> Numero seven, number seven. Oh, it, wasn't it wasn't French at all. It was it was, it was terrible English. Um, number seven is a uh, Cannibal, the musical. Aha, uh-huh. indeed. Yeah, uh-huh. so, by, uh, Trey Parker and Matt Stone's first film picked up by uh, by Troma Entertainment, giving them a platform. Uh, to uh, to distribute and uh, really get their uh, unique blend of humour, certainly in line with uh, with Trump's other works as well. Yeah, um, yeah. The start of a, an amazing career. That amazing. Those guys have shaped for themselves. Yeah, they? exactly. Leading to South Park. Yeah. Let's not forget basketball. Yeah. Team um, America. Team, Team America. Orgasmo. Exactly. Exactly. You know, the, 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 they've made it and and carved out a successful career in the mainstream. But this is where it begun. Yeah. 
Um, actually, there's something I've found out recently. Apparently, Lloyd Kaufman makes an appearance in Orgasmo. Oh, does he? I'm going to have to go back. Oh, no, I need to, need to check that out and, and revisit that film. Uh, but Cannibal, the musical. Yeah. Um, yep, number seven. And another fantastic example how, of how trauma entertainment is a, is a platform for uh, uh, aspiring artists. Yeah, and throats being ripped out. And yeah, and, yeah, and that as well. Yeah. Okay, number six. Number six. Uh, right, this is a personal favourite of mine, and I'm a little bit disappointed it's not higher up. Uh-huh. But I've gone for it. But our listeners, at the end of the day, have voted for this. Yep. And at number six, we have Sergeant Kabuki Man, uh, NYPD. Yeah. I'm always attracted to those kind of um, sort of beat down, um, rough and ready sort of cops um, who are sort of wisecracking. Um, Sandwiching. But, but, you know, sort sort of reluctant hero type of characters, uh, which pretty much sums up uh, Sergeant Kabuki Man. Against their will become some sort of freakish um, superhero. Yeah. Morphs. Exactly. Uh, written by uh, by Lloyd uh, Kaufman, it's one of the uh, the uh, outright comedies uh, within Troma's back catalogue. Um, and yeah, here we are, number six. Um, Sajam Kabuki Man. Sajam Kabuki Man. Yeah. Okay. So that takes us to uh, the midway point already. Ooh. We're there already, midway. Oh my God. Oh my God. Where has the time gone? Um, no. Number five. Is quite conveniently, and this wasn't planned, obviously. Number five is Tromeo and Juliet. Oh, quite again, quite uh, not, not that high up. Yeah, Tromeo and Juliet um, making it in at number five. Uh, we just mentioned earlier Cannibal the Musical being a platform for which uh, Trey Parker and Matt Stone managed to launch a career yeah. um, and get into uh, the film industry. Um, Tromeo and Juliet in much the same way. Uh, a gentleman by the name of James Gunn. Yep. Um, you might have heard of this guy. He's it's, it's made a few... Just a few films. Some about Guardians yeah, and, and the Galaxy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, But James Gunn, um, yeah, again, is, is absolutely household name now. Uh, and rightly so, uh, because the work he's doing... Um, is is fantastic and stands out amongst a lot of the uh, um, uh, a lot of the Marvel um, works at the moment. Um, but very, very where, well said, Adam. where it all started. <laughs> where <laughs> carry on. Uh, but where it all started was at Troma. Yeah. And uh, here we go. This leads us nicely mm-hmm. into uh, our review. Yeah. My topic: Romeo and Juliet. Johnny's top pick. Gentlemen, your conversation makes interesting listening. Okay, so, Tromeo and Juliet. Now, um, if you're familiar with the, the, the tale, Romeo and Juliet, by Willie Shocker, which is my uh, new name for William Shakespeare, do you like mm-hmm. that? Shackers, yeah, I like it. Or Shackers. Um, obviously, the, the original story um, is about um, Romeo and Juliet, uh, star-crossed lovers, from two warring families and it's all about love that you know can't happen shouldn't happen but does happen and some of the consequences of that and their battle between um being trying to you know be together but in uh the situation of uh the warring families um and this uh tromeo and juliet is troma's retelling of it um not to be confused with obviously the leonardo dicaprio and what's her face um, version that we had, which you know was was a good modern day uh-huh. retelling. Really? <laughs> well, it, was, it, was, it, was it came out in the same year, I think, as well, didn't it? it was like 1996. Oh, it? Yeah, I believe yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah it was Trump's answer to it. Yeah. Um, I, uh, um, but anyway, um, yeah, this is Trump's answer to it, and uh, in yeah, it's, it's got everything about it in true Trump's spirit. Um, it's got you know uh, outrageous characters, gore comedy and mm. 
some very strange lesbian scenes. Yeah, some very strange incest. parts that I don't think were in the original story, such as uh, an abusive father. Uh, so Juliet's dad is a bit of a yeah, a bit yeah. Of the, one. There certainly wasn't as much incest in the uh, in the original. Potentially implied, you know. Can't remember <laughs> to be frank. It's been a lot of years since I uh, no. um, read Romeo and Juliet. No, I can only remember eggs. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, um, a bit of incest thrown in there yeah. uh, because you know, hey, it's, it's trauma and why not? Yeah, and um, you know, a lot of his, you know, um, yeah. Once uh, Romeo and Juliet find each other and they're trying to be together whilst trying not to be killed by each other's family. Um, you learn a lot more about Juliet's relationship with her dad, and you soon discover that you know he has a bit of a thing for keeping her in a a, a glass sort of fish tanky thing, doesn't he? And yeah, doing yeah. all sorts of things. Mm. Um, but yeah, uh, no, I think um, I think this is a really really good film, and I genuinely say I thought it was a fantastic film. I thought it was a great retelling of it. Um, I thought it had all the good elements trauma film mm-hmm. um and, and i loved it as well at, at times where the dialogue spilled into that shakespearean discourse um mm. and you know and uh, there were some really good performances like will keenan um i thought was awesome as tromeo um mm-hmm. and jane jensen's juliet um it was yeah i uh i thought it was a great cast yeah i thought it was very well put together um looking at the credits so uh, we've even got Lloyd Kaufman once again making an appearance as a uh, credited as found his penis after much searching slash guy spitting water. That's yeah, um, we've also got Lemmy, oh, um, of course, yes. appearing again. We're in a trauma film um, yeah. as the narrator. Yeah, um, yes. oh, I, I thought it was amazing. As soon as it starts, you got Lemmy sort of setting the scene in fair. Verona, trauma, whatever Fair it is. trauma. Yeah. Um, it's yeah, it's a good way to start off, and it sets a tone, doesn't it? Really, mm. um, uh, you know, good soundtrack, including a, a track from Lemmy. Yeah. Um, but you know, some of it, you know, it's quite a few sort of punky grunge bands, um, indie bands on there as well from the era. Mm. Um, and again, it really kind of helps set the tone. Um, well written, as we mentioned before, James Gunn. Yes. Um, of pen in this I think there was rumoured that it was all written in uh, iambic pen- pentamina uh, but I'm not <clears throat> what convinced say, uh, sorry? iambic pentamina iambic pentamina yeah am I a moron for not knowing what that is see so, uh, um, the, the rhythm of how it's written so oh. did, did it in within Shakespeare's writing. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so to, to parallel <laughs> that, yeah, no, to parallel like that, I, didn't pay attention I, I remember school. the rumors, but I don't think it's it is all written like that. But I think there are, certainly are, are parts. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you are. Yeah. yeah, there are parts where they sort of slip into that, aren't they? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Because yeah. thou would. Yeah, <laughs> but it's. Um, I suppose that's an example of what trauma do and do very well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, uh, on the surface, you could see a lot of the films as just being, you know, kind of B movie, yep. uh, violence, horror, and sex for the sake of violence, horror, and sex. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you don't have to scratch too far beneath the surface to actually see that there's a level of intellect. Um, there's usually, uh, you know, kind of social and political uh, messages um, as well. Yep. Um, and I don't think this is any exception. Um, at all Um, I think it's quite intelligent what they did with most of the film Mm. I certainly thought it was more entertaining Mm. uh, than uh, the Romeo and Juliet Mm -hmm. uh, the contemporary Romeo and Juliet that we got also in 1996 starring uh, Mr Leonardo DiCaprio yeah Um, yeah, I I, I think this was a much more entertaining version of getting that classic story um, to the young people of today yeah, yeah. And, uh, thank you, James Gunn and Lloyd. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, thank you for bringing us that. And um, yeah, uh, this was my top pick because I just, I just thoroughly enjoyed it. I just loved every moment of it. Just the mm. characters were great. Um, the action was great. We were getting the computer monitor smashed over the head and beaten with knives and what have you. Beaten with knives? That doesn't even make any sense. But no, yeah, I believe that's be- that's called being stabbed. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's what I meant. <laughs> but yeah, there's some comedy. Um, Gore that I quite enjoyed as well. Yeah, the, we, we get and, a uh, giant penis monster, and <laughs> oh, yeah, um, no trauma film is complete without yeah, yeah. A, a giant girthy penis monster. <laughs> Good <course. laughs> and, um, and obviously, uh, <laughs> Leonardo I, DiCaprio I, didn't have that shit. <laughs> yeah, and, and in true trauma spirit, they, they gave a bit, added a bit of a twist at the end 
to the film, which was um Oh fuck it, should should we uh just say that it involves um His fucking his sister. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Yeah. Um and and we see Romeo and Juliet happily ever after with their deformed children. <laughs> Because why not? Incestuous union. Why not? But they're happy. We're, we're not um, endorsing incest. No. Nope. Um, but um, you know, it is in, in a way a happy ending. Yeah. More but, so than 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 double suicide. Yeah. But again, it's you know in the the, the spirit of trauma, you know, portraying retelling something that's so classic, um, and uh, adding a theme that you know most, uh, you know corporations most filmmakers might stray away from (laughs) say would definitely stray away exactly and and doing it in that lovely trauma spirit yeah but let's say what 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 we've said a million times before on this podcast is the role of independent art and and independent cinema is to push boundaries yes um you know that's how you influence change and that's how you Mm. introduce new issues not saying that there was a need to introduce the issue of incest, uh, but, but there's added, multiple other examples within tra- trauma movies where they've done that yeah. um, and have been the first to address certain issues. So, um, yeah, Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, get on the YouTubes and watch it. Yes, again, again, YouTube, again. trauma channel. It's all on there. Watch it for free. Yeah, yeah. Do yourself a favour. You don't have to buy it. What have you? It's free movie. It's free entertainment. But but you know. But if you do want to support Troma, um, subscribe to Troma now. If you want to add a bit back, you know, support them in what they do. Be part of that Troma family. The Troma movement. Yeah. Not just any independent film movement. A true independent film. Oh God, sorry. I'm oh. Just, uh, just had a taste of uh, one of those cocktails I made in part one. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's probably matured. Yeah. Anyway, so should we get on to our uh, food recommendations? Um, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, I believe it's your turn, your honours, as oh, it were. Oh yeah, of course it is. Yeah, I suppose you went last time, didn't you? Um, I did. I did, yeah. sir. Well, on the theme of um, uh, love that should not happen, on the theme of you know incest, on the theme, <laughs> basically on the theme of things you probably shouldn't have. Um, I've come up with a bit of a well I tried to think of foods that um, I've eaten that I probably shouldn't eat I shouldn't enjoy but I kind of did it's probably a bit wrong but I enjoyed it in, in nonetheless and the, I suppose the, the prime example I found was um, uh, I went to Japan a few years back yeah. and uh, one of the meals I got served included raw horse meat uh, horse sashimi. Oh, that's, this is going to be controversial, <laughs> isn't it? Because yeah, uh, people love them horses. Yeah, and obviously in this country, there is a lot of uh, <laughs> scandals with you know large uh, supermarkets selling meat products that included raw, you know, included horse meat in the mix somewhere. Pe- people, illegally. people don't want horse in the crispus. People don't want horse in their uh, the crispy pancakes. Apparently. No, no who'd, who'd have funked it? No, they don't want it in their burgers, you know. No, no. But you know, I've been there, I've experienced it, and it's all right, you know, tasty yeah. meat. Well, in, in in France, for example, it's it's pretty pretty yeah. standard, isn't it? Yeah, I was going to say le chien, but that's isn't that is that a dog? Not a horse. That, that's a, a yeah, I believe that's a dog. Again, I'm showing my illiteracy. But there, there are certain countries as well where that may be acceptable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, so raw horse meat. Um, have you got any f- uh, foods that you probably shouldn't enjoy that you have done? In your, uh... Yeah, well, you know what? The I think for the first time in all the episodes that we've been doing, we've pretty much got an identical. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, you went for horse <laughs> as well? <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, man. <coughs> Um, in terms of theme, um, we're, we're pretty much identical. It's just that you've okay, gone, you gone for okay. something a little bit more exotic than my choice. All right. Um, I, I'm sticking, if you listen to the first part of our uh, trauma dedicated episodes, mm-hmm. um, I went for a microwave pizza for a class of oh, Newcomb yeah. High. I was going to nuke that pizza high. Yep. Um, I've stuck with pizza. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> because it, I was, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Just I, I think I must be just craving pizza. Okay. Not had one for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was just thinking about. Uh, there's a reason behind it, though. There's a legitimate reason. Yeah. And again, it's on your theme. It's two elements that that shouldn't be together. Yeah, it's a sweet and it's a sour. You know, we're, we're told we've got the savoury and we've got the sweet. Mm-hmm. Not the sweet and the sour. So we've got the savoury, we've got the sweet, we've got the the ham, and we've got the pineapple in my fun. Hawaiian pizza. That's what I've gone for. Yeah, because on face value, you know, all right. Now these days, it's a common thing. You know, yeah, you have a gammon is. steak, you, you have a a big whack of pineapple on there. Mm. But there was a time, there was a time when that was taboo. Yeah. When if you brought a gammon steak in front of somebody. And shoved some pineapple on there, that what forbidden the fruit. Is? They'd be like, <laughs> No, <laughs> what is this? This is this yeah. should not be. We'll have muck like this in my day. The sweet and the salt should not go. Yeah. These but, are but. these are rival tastes. So I wanted to put those rival tastes in into my food suggestion. Yeah. Um, and obviously, you know, it's pizza. Um, the original set in Italy. <laughs> A fair Verona. A fair Verona. Um, so I'm gonna have another oh, Verona and Hawaiian pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Hawaiian pizza. Forbidden Hawaiian pizza that should not be. Um, so, uh, so yeah, we were kind of on a similar uh, theme in that we wanted it to represent, I suppose, the, the war in families and that forbidden love. Um, um, but again, for the first time, many episodes think where we've been thinking on the same lines. Uh, well, it can happen, can it? It can happen, it yeah. It can happen. But, um, but yeah. So there you go, folks. If you want to, uh, uh, again, uh, indulge in another top trauma pick uh give tromeo and juliet a watch yeah do uh, it and if you want a little something to eat with it why not have um uh, a bit of raw horse meat if you can get your hands on it or uh, i don't know maybe if uh, one of the the main the large supermarkets that i won't name uh still stock any of those dodgy burgers maybe you can get yourself a bit of a you know, backdoor horse burger um or why not have yourself a hawaiian pizza yeah, a combination of ham and pineapple. Possibly the simplest um, option. And as always, if you have your own food and film suggestion, mm-hmm. um, you know, hit us up on Twitter. Yeah, FTWFB Podcast. Let us know your thoughts uh, and suggestions. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, um, if you just want to, just let us know that we're, we're dicks. Just uh, d- you know, do that if you want. Well, that would be a bit harsh. No, no, don't Fair. do that. Well, any communication. Any communication. We know that we're actually that someone's yeah. listening. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, uh, so yeah. yeah. Oh well, there we go then. It is happening again. It is happening again. How do, how do? Pablo here with the next instalment of my covert casts. Um, basically, I'm documenting my attempts to track down and capture auteur filmmaker and general head honcho of trauma entertainment, Lloyd Kaufman. Um, now I find myself here at uh, Toxie's dump, being able to track it down. Um, I'm right next now to Toxie's shack. Um, now I haven't had a look recently, but uh, when I first got here, I noticed. Well, let's have a little check. Yeah, he's still here. Lloyd Kaufman in attendance. We've got a Lloyd. We have a Lloyd um, sitting there with Toxic Avenger, tucking into a, a big bowl of Toxie bites. Um, just one bowl, two spoons. Not for me to judge. Um, always then we've got Claire um, bumping about the place. Uh, uh, of course, tragically blind, um, but lovely girl. Lovely, lovely girl. Um, now, just to move away from the window slightly, what I've done in the interim is I've set up uh, quite an elaborate system of cages, traps, pulleys. It, I mean, to go into detail would be confusing, but essentially, if you think of Mouse Trap, the board game, it's just basically a bigger, rustier, um, more likely to give you tetanusier version of that game. Um, now, um, what I've done is uh, 
I've been able to get my hands on a uh, copy of uh, Kenji Musiguchi, uh, his film The Princess Yang Kuei Fei, um, which uh, from my research may be Lloyd's favourite film. Uh, I've set that on a pressure pad and uh, once he spots it, starts heading over, traps it, well essentially the trap is set, the trap is ready to go. So, uh, oh, looks like there's a bit of commotion, I'll just uh, hide here in these, in these bushes. Secreted from view. Oh, here comes Lloyd. Oh, eyebrows raised. Slight tilt of the head. He's heading towards the DVD. Oh, just a couple more steps, Lloyd. Oh, seems to have been a large breasted group of ladies arrived. Their bus has broken down. Oh, Lloyd. Oh, he's off. Straight over. Seems to have caught his interest. All oh, right, well, maybe he'll come. Oh, is that Claire? Oh, she doesn't... I doubt she's going for the DVD, but she's heading in that... Oh, oh. well, <clears throat> I think that was all right. Um, I'll have to check and see if she's alive or well, conscious. You know, just make sure she's all right. Um, yeah, she seems to be... Oh, oh Toxic Avengers coming at me. Quite angry. Um, big fan of your work, fella. Uh, uh, seems I'm crab around the throat. Um, I'll leave it here and I'll just sign off for now. So this is Pat, I'm signing off. I'll, I'll get out with this. I'll, I'll speak to you later. Doodles. No, I'll tell you what, I, I couldn't really look at a horse um, in the same way after that. Just, like, every time I look at it now, I'm like, mm, look at that thigh. Really? Have you developed a bit of a, a, bit of a craving yeah, for the old yeah. horse? Well, yeah, I have actually. Yeah. But, um, yeah, no, I, I might just stick to the old ham and pineapple. Yeah? Yeah. What yeah, it's, it? it's, it's easy. It's easy to get your hands on. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's more available, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, less likely to be sued mm. or something or chased by a jockey anyway or, or murdered and skinned by animal rights activists yeah 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 N neither of those M maybe no s not that. skinned and murdered by a jockey would that be unusual i don't know I, could, I, could, could I feel i feel like there's a, a yeah i was gonna say i feel like killer jockeys is a trauma film waiting to happen oh my god uh there but you know people listen to this don't wait for trauma to do it get out there and make your own film yeah killer yeah. jockeys Yes. And on that note, that brings us to an end of uh, part two of our trauma special. Um, you know, uh, join us next time for part three, where we'll be looking at um, Pablo's topic. Um, we'll also be finding out if Pablo's got any closer to uh, tracking down Lo Lloyd Kaufman. Um, <laughs> we'll see. And we'll also uh, continue our countdown of the top ten trauma films as voted by you, the listener and the community. So uh, keep listening, keep subscribing, keep sharing, and uh, we'll uh, we'll see you soon. Yes. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to Food to Watch Films by, brought to you by Johnny, Adam, and Pablo. If you like what you hear, then don't forget to leave us a review on iTunes, share an episode with a friend or a family member, and basically just um, continue to enjoy our podcast and love us. Otherwise, we will find you and we will kill you. Thanks for listening. Bye.